Hello and welcome of course to another car review in Gran Turismo 7 and this is a vehicle which I've wanted to review from day one, even more so when I saw the specs in the game. It's of course a Vision GT car, which a lot of people are not a fan of in general anyway. They prefer to have real cars in the game. That's understandable. I personally like it when we get the craziest ones, like a couple of the most popular, the Tomahawk, the Chaparral laser car. Those tend to really embrace the lunacy of the Vision GT potential and that's when my favourite stuff tends to happen. This one is exactly that. This has 1,876 horsepower, all electric, one forward gear. So in other words, it's got 1,000 horsepower more than a Red Bull in this game. It weighs 1,400 kilos, which isn't too bad. Again, you've got the battery pack, of course, in an electric car, which is always going to increase the weight. The performance points are crazy high. It's one of the relatively few cars to exceed 1,000 points. Even stock, it's 1,035. If you swap it to soft tyres, it jumps to 1,045, or just under 1,044. But unfortunately, one of the major downsides of this compared to the past of Vision GT cars is that, much like many of them, Tomahawk notwithstanding, in Gran Turismo 6, the Mercedes was good in this regard, you can't tune many of the settings that much, which is a shame, because it basically means what you've got is what you've got, and that's all you've got to work with. So in the case of this car, you cannot adjust the downforce, you can't drop the weight or increase the power. You can decrease the power and increase the weight with ballast and a restrictor, which could come in useful for certain point levels, say a thousand for example, but in terms of, you know, suspension, gearbox, diff, that's where it's really limited. You can't tune the transmission at all, not surprising for an EV car, the suspension side is just dampers, basically, so you're very limited in terms of what you can do. The question is then, what does it give you to work with? Well, that's where things get interesting, because this is almost like a combination of some of the best Vision GT traits and some of the, not necessarily worst, but some of the ones which I've never been a fan of. Now, as many of you have been around on the channel for a while will know, I do not like the Subaru Vision GT, mostly because it feels like a front-wheel drive car. It just feels like it can't get the power down effectively and ends up having a very strange handling signature. Now, I haven't driven that one in this game yet, but I'm going to assume, given the past two games, it probably still feels fairly similar. Also, the Nissan GTR LM Nismo the real Le Mans prototype with front-wheel drive has a very distinct and challenging style of steering. But when you get those cars right, especially the Nissan, they can actually be something of a weapon. That's what this Jag is like. It's no way near as challenging as either of those, because it is technically four-wheel drive, but it definitely has much more of a front-wheel drive profile when it comes to exiting corners. So the approach that I would recommend taking if you do buy this car is allow it to kind of 50-50 coast. So coast through corners with about 50% throttle and don't really open up that power until the car is pointing basically exactly in the direction you want it to go. Because this really is an all-electric torpedo of a car. Speaking to that straight line torpedo performance though, it is astonishingly quick in a straight line. Top speed cannot be adjusted unfortunately, but 262 miles an hour is very good, especially for an electric car in this game. The acceleration is fantastic. Off the line it does suffer from quite a bit of wheel spin, but once it gets going it goes from 100 to 200 all the way up to 262 in no time at all. And even here at Le Mans, with the chicanes and less than perfect driving, there were more than a few occasions where I went over the track limits, for a reason that I'll get to in just a second, even with all of that in mind, it still did a sub three minute lap. So the performance is fantastic on this thing, especially compared to the vast majority of other Vision GTs. They do tend to be cars which are great on paper, but don't always live up to that in practice. This is, I would say, definitely one of the best Vision GT cars if you actually plan to race it. It's a monster of a car, I absolutely love it, I think it's crazy and very cool. It does have, as you'll have seen in the review, a fully detailed interior, which is very nice to see for a change in a Vision GT car. And the reason why I said I was going to come back to me quite a few times going over the track limits is actually nothing to do with the handling of the car, and actually more to do with the brakes. I would say if this car has any specific downside, it is the brakes. Because even though it has the air brakes, even though, you know, doubtless the brakes, the calipers, the discs are very high caliber, it just doesn't feel like that. 
you build up so much speed so quickly and especially with that 1400 kilo weight which of course increases the amount of weight that you've then got to slow down well it just doesn't feel like it stops anywhere near as impressively as it goes that's a unique challenge because with, some, with something like the tomahawk it stops on a dime ridiculously quick with the red bull of course it stops as well as it goes. With a number of cars, Vision GT or otherwise, they are very well balanced between acceleration and braking. It feels appropriate. With this Jag, it's way off. The brakes are no way near as powerful as you'd expect them to be. They're actually more like what you'd assume would be in uh, maybe a GT car, like a GT3 machine, not even a Lamar prototype. They're not even that powerful. So it's a learning curve using this vehicle. And I would summarize my thoughts on the Jag by saying that I love the fact that they put this in the game. It's so much more useful and so much more badass than the normal version, as nice as that one is. But crucially, it's a car which is easy to drive, but hard to master. So it's very forgiving. Nine times out of 10, acceleration's easy to use. If you coast through corners, it's very smooth, very controlled. It doesn't really surprise you that much. But if you push it to its hardest, that's when you really need to get a few practice laps in, get some time with this car to learn the nuances of how to get the best out of it in terms of the torque steer, the low speed heaviness, the, the understeering effect, and of course, spinning up the front tires through low speed corners. Once you master those things, just like the Nissan Nismo, you can get some pretty impressive potential out of it. Ultimately though, I would definitely recommend checking it out if you are a fan of these crazy cars. And of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews as well. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.